In this example, we want to find input impedance of a gyrator network. In this circuit, there are three gyrators, and we want to find input impedance Zn. Uh, we want to use KVLM mesh analysis to achieve this. Uh, there are three gyrators. So a gyrator is a two-port device. Uh, there, this is the first one, the second one, and the third one. Uh, a gyrator has one main parameter, which is gyration resistance. In this case, for this gyrator is R12. And the way the voltages and currents of the two ports are related to each other for an ideal gyrator is like this. So for this one, V1 and V2, I1 and I2 are related like this. V1, V2, 0 minus R12 plus R12, 0, I1, I2. Basically, V1 is minus R12, I2 with this direction. And V2 is R12 times I1 with this direction. That's um, the relationship between the voltages and currents for an ideal gyrator. So knowing this, we want to uh, figure out Zn, which is Zn is V over I1, where V is a test voltage we apply to this port. And we want to find I1 as a function of V so that we can figure out Z Zn. To achieve that, we're going to write uh, KVL uh, via mesh analysis for these three loops um, so that we can figure out current I1. So let's do it for uh, loop number one here. So in loop number one, um, we have uh, the current I1 looping, and we have uh, V1 plus V6 should be equal to V. So we can write down V1 plus V6 should be equal to voltage V. V is a known voltage we apply. OK, um, and for um, this, V1, we are going to use uh, this known relationship. So V1 is minus R12 times I2. I2 is the current in the second loop. At the same time, V6 is related to I3 via uh, R13 times I3. So I'm going to write down um, that V1 is minus R12 times I2 and V6 is minus R13 times I3. This is equal to V. So this is equation one. Now for the second loop here, I can write KVL and it current I2 is going this way, so it will be plus V2 plus V3 plus Zx times I2, that is the voltage drop across this resistor, should be zero. So it will be plus V2 plus V3 and then plus Zx times I2 should be zero. That's the KVL. Now, V2, I'm going to use this relationship, for which is forced by this gyrator. So V2 is R1 two times I1. Okay, so... V2 is R12 times I1, and V3 uh, is uh, equal to uh, minus R23 times the current that is going into this positive terminal of the second port of this gyrator. That current is in reverse direction than the current I3 defined for this loop, so I can say if V3 is R23 times minus the current, it will be times plus I3. So it's going to be plus uh, R23 times I3. And then Zx plus Zx I2 is 0. So this is the second equation. And from the loop 3, I can write um, V5 because that current is going through this, so V5 plus the voltage drop across Zy, which is uh, plus Zy times I3, plus, uh, it would be plus if it was this way, if it was through the positive, but it is not through the positive, so it's going to be minus V4 is 0. 
But what is V4? V4 is the second, term, second port of this gyrator, which is this side. So that is related to, R, we can write instead of V4, uh, it is equal to R, R2 three times the current going to the positive terminal of the first port of this gyrator, which is I2. So V4 is equal to R, R2 three times I2. So uh, I'm going to write it down this way, minus R2 three times I2, that is instead of V4, uh, I will keep Z, Y, I3 in place. And instead of V5, I can write V5 again is the second port, voltage of the second port of this gyrator, which then is related to the first port's current, I1, um, via relationship R13 times I1. So instead of V5, I'm going to write down R13 times I1. So this is the third equation. So now we have three equations. The unknowns are I1, I2, I3. The knowns are V and the value of these uh, gyration resistances at Zx and Zy. Now, I, the only thing I'm interested in is Iy, because that helps me with figuring out Zn. So uh, three equations, three unknown. I can use Kramer rule. Uh, and write down I1 is equal to denominator is determinant of um, first side which uh, if I rewrite these equation it would be something like this right it will be maybe I clarified this way it will be uh, as if the coefficient for I1 here is 0 so you have 0 minus R12 minus R13 the coefficient I, I1 is here, R12, uh, Zx for coefficient of I2, and then we have um, R23. And finally, for this one, we have R13 um, minus R23. That's the coefficient for I2, and then Zy is the coefficient for I3. So this matrix times I1, I2, I3, outcome is V00. So that is the matrix representation of this three equation. And we want to solve for I1 using Kramer rule. The answer would be the denominator is determinant of this matrix. So it's going to be determinant of 0 minus R12 uh, minus R13 and R12Zx uh, minus R2 uh, plus R23 and then R13 minus R23 Zy. Um, okay. And um, for the numerator, we have, again, using Kramer rule, we want to solve for I1. So the only thing I need to do is just replace the first column with uh, v0, v0, so it's going to be V0, 0, and then uh, repeating minus R1, 2, uh, Zx, R2, minus R2, 3, and uh, here we have uh, minus R1, 3, uh, R2, 3, Zy. All right. Um, now we have to solve for this. So to do that, it's simple. And the denominator we have, um, this is 0. Then this multiplication, is, so it's going to be minus R12, R23, R13. Then we have next one, which is minus R13, R12 plus, times minus R23. So it's going to be plus R13, R12, R23. And then we have minus uh, R13, R13, Zx. Then we have minus R23, R23 times 0. And finally, we have Z1 minus Z1 R12 minus R12. So it's going to be plus R12 squared Zy. 
in the numerator this one cancel out this one and in the numerator we have v times zx dy and uh, then the only non other non-zero component would be minus minus which is plus r23 times r23 times v so it's going to be uh, r23 squared times v all right um, so I am going to rewrite this as v times zx zy plus r2 3 squared divide by r1 3 squared times zx plus r1 2 squared times zy. Uh, that is now a, com a relationship between v and i1 so I can rewrite it as v divided by i1 is equal to um, so I'm just reshuffling things and this goes to the denominator so it becomes zx zy plus r2 3 squared and this is exactly zn that we were looking for so this is the final answer hope this is a good example to learn more about how to uh, analyze networks with gyrators and how to uh, figure out input impedance using mesh analysis for these networks